Well, it sure is a good thing that I post these podcasts at 5.30 in the a.m. Otherwise, how would you have known that it was National Walk and Bike to School Day? What would you have done? Driven? Huh. So foolish. It's walk and bike to school day. You can't drive. You can't drive your kids. You can't drive nobody. Everybody's got to walk and bike. Especially if you live really far away. No buses. Nope, nope. Those are not allowed. Oh, and if you are sending your kids to school today, make sure you give your daughter some cash. You know, for lunch and maybe a little bit extra. That's right, everybody. The first Wednesday in October is National Walk and Bike to School Day. I feel like this is kind of an odd place to have it, like a month already into school, because I feel like parents would already have like their schedules all figured out of knowing how long it's going to take to get everyone ready and get everyone to school, yada, yada, yada. So you don't want to just be like, oh, well, I guess I can't drive you today. You got to get actually 10 to 15 minutes extra or <laughs> however far away you live to bike there in time. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter for kids on campus, but I also don't know if schools can account for bikes belonging to like every single student. Um, I know like my university has just a bunch of little bike storage units all over the place. Uh, but like, yeah, I don't know if primary schools can really do that. I also don't know how many primary schoolers know how to bike. What age is it that you learn how to bike? I learned pretty late into the game, as in like a couple years later than most people my age, I guess. I don't even know when that was though. But yeah, I got to learn on my sister's bike and it was purple, which back then I thought was girly, but now I think it's the best color in the world. So that just shows you how, uh, how the world makes you see colors and then how you decide to see them on your own as you grow up. Purple's the best. Also, for some reason, all of the video files in this episode are purple. Not that you guys can see that, but on my end, it's all purple, which that's pretty cool. I like that. So it says here that the National Center for Safe Routes to School has been working for over two years, or no, sorry, over two decades even, well, that's ten times as much as I first read, uh, to create safe conditions for walkable neighborhoods, and that being able to walk and ride a bike in the community gives children a strong sense of self-confidence, which, okay, yeah, it's important to give children self-confidence, but I don't know how... Like, I don't think that all parents necessarily need to feel comfortable, like, letting their young children go to school on their own, like, walking and biking. I guess you could always, like, walk and bike with them, but, like, I don't I don't know then how, where the, where the confidence is coming in. This seems to be like, oh, you're sending them off on their own, now they're self-confident because they can just do it on their own. But, yeah, so, I don't know, protect your kids. Uh, National Walk and Bike to School Day isn't just for children. <gasps> there, they got us, they got the university people. So apparently the first bike was invented in 1817 by someone named Carl von Dreis, uh, who invented the Laufs, Lauf machine, ah, very German, uh, which was the pedalless running machine. Um, I'm pretty sure Lauf machine does actually just translate to run and machine, so there you go. Um, but yeah, it was pedalless until 1861, so what is that, about 34 years, if I did that math right? Uh, bikes get pedals, um, and... Before that, they were just pushing their feet along the ground. <laughs> oh, that's that's like what skateboarders have to do. <laughs> uh, in 1920, cars gained their popularity. To combat the fact that motor vehicles are becoming more popular than bicyclists, the kid's bike is invented, a 65-pound machine that mimics motor vehicles. That mimics motor vehicles? Wait, so is it just like a little car thing, or is it actually like a kid's bike? Because normal bikes aren't motor vehicles. And then in 1930, we got fat tires, which were introduced by Schwinn Springfork, okay, which become the standard for mountain bikes, because uh, road bikes are supposed to be much thinner. My bikes growing up actually were a bit larger than normal. I don't know if that was just like kids' bikes are like that, and then if my parents just had kind of more mountain bikes than road bikes, but yeah, I've never had a bike that has thin wheels, because I haven't had a bike in the last like, whew, what, seven, eight years? Jeez. How am I going to get to school? And now it's time for five bike facts that you won't believe. Number one, Andrew Halinga of Australia biked 209.77 miles backwards. Number two, Adrian Alul of Australia mountain biked, mountain biked, mountain boke, 359.02 miles in a day. E number three, so, Sotheby's, Sotheby's, oh boy, 
Don't, I can't read. New York sold British artist Damien Hurst's butterfly bike for $500,000. I don't even know who Damien Hurst is, but he had a butterfly bike and it was worth half a mil. And number four, the United Kingdom's Hackney Council and partners got 938 riders on their bike bus. Uh, I believe bike buses are basically just like 3D tandem bikes. Like there's multiple people in a row and column. Um it's pretty nifty. I've seen one before. Uh, also, that's actually the last fact. It says that there's five facts you won't believe about bikes, but there's only four. I guess the fifth fact is that you wouldn't believe that there's only only four only four facts about bikes. And then we got National Plus Size Appreciation Day, which serves as a great opportunity to remind ourselves that when it comes to beauty, one size doesn't fit all. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> The, pro uh, the purpose of the holiday is to celebrate the curves that men and women everywhere rock. So whether you happen to be plus-sized or not, get out and spread the word that having a little more to love can be a truly fantastic thing. In the 1920s, Lane Bryant began selling clothes marketed towards the quote-unquote stout women. Uh, in 1980, Marina Rinaldi, founded by Max Mara, became one of the first high-end clothing lines for plus-sized women. In 2016, Ashley Graham became the first plus-sized model to appear on the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition cover. And in 2017, was the first ever National Plus Size Appreciation Day. So this has only been going on for four days. Look at that. Or <laughs> four years. <laughs> four days. That's about this podcast almost. No, four years. Four years we've had this holiday. So it's a pretty new one. Uh, then the one thing on this site says that apparently in the modeling world, plus size is designated to women sizes 6 to 16. And it kind of poses the question, is size 6 really plus size? Question mark. And honestly, I have... I have no idea. Um, women's clothing sizes completely like go over my head. There's like a zero and a double zero, and apparently they change at different stores. So yeah, I mean that's a fact that maybe maybe some listeners will understand and be like, oh yeah, I can picture that. Okay, that is interesting. But I, I have no idea. So then next we have National Coaches Day, and as I was just kind of looking through this article. It kind of reminded me of how I mentioned that National Vegetarian Day seemed to be a ploy by the veggie tray companies because there's a lot of stuff of saying like, oh, if you don't want to like bother putting in any effort in making a veggie dish for all your veggie friends, just get them a veggie tray. And I was like, okay, um, like I feel like you could do a little bit more for, <laughs> for them. Got to get some protein in there and stuff. Um, but this page has this whole big thing about Flip Give, which is like... Um, I guess a company that helps you make, I, I don't know here, flip give makes the process simple with these three steps. Create your team. See $20 bonus offer below. Oh, heck yeah. Uh, link below the video national today. Uh, number two, invite your teammates and three shop either in store or online. So you can like, wait, is this just for like shirts and stuff then? Cause that could be interesting. You can just get like your whole team. Uh, do, 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 do. Flipgive has devised partnerships with hundreds of national brands to provide cash back from purchases made through its platform. That way, teams earn money when they shop with their favorite brands for groceries, gas, clothes. Oh, okay, I see. So you just kind of like have a team of people that whenever they spend money somewhere, it all gets, like, you get savings for it. Okay, I thought it was going to be like a place where you could get uniforms and then you could get like deals on it because that could have been cool. But it does not seem like that it also says if you sign up and create a team now you'll receive the twenty dollar bonus but i imagine this is from last year <laughs> maybe doing this like so early isn't the best because they probably don't have time to update it for the new day i also wonder who's updating all these because like I i'm just reading it off and like the sites don't really have like it doesn't really say who who worked on them like i can't really cite them other than giving the site so that's what i do um I was about to give some coaching tips, but it's from Flipgive. And, like, I, I am being paid to promote Flipgive. So, <laughs> I don't really know what more to say about Coach Day. <laughs> it's just really sponsored, this page. Um, yeah, if you're on a sports team and you have a coach, just be nice to them. Maybe maybe bring a snack that, you know, they really like. If you're the person on a team to bring snack that day, man, this is, like, my knowledge of sports is so, so much from when I was a little kid. All I really did after that was rowing and curling, and well, I I can tell you I never did anything for my coaches. Whoops. <laughs> uh, maybe I need to start f doing these to like properly showcase the fact that you should be doing them. But I don't really have a coach at the moment, so I guess I cannot. 
Uh, anyway, <laughs> next we have National German American Day, uh, which I did actually notice when looking at all the monthly holidays that there's like a lot of different like American heritage, like something hyphen American Day, um, or at least like this month is for them. So I wonder if like the month stuff is just taken from certain days and being like, oh, we're actually just going to celebrate this the whole month. Um, hopefully they do that for the no alcohol one, seeing as there were two days of no alcohol, but there was also then one about vodka and spoilers <laughs> there's one coming up today too about alcohol so we'll, we'll get there um besides being a great excuse to eat bratwurst and drink beer um actually brought first right uh like there's no tomorrow german american day on october 6th honors the anniversary of the first german immigrants arriving in america since they touched down and created german town in pennsylvania nice german immigrants and their descendants have had a massive impact on okay wait wait, wait. i actually have a question about this so this is not something I know, and maybe I'll look it up. I, I will in a second to figure out an answer to this. But like, I've always wondered why countries are named different things in different languages. Like it's Deutschland in German, but we call it Germany. And I actually don't know where the word Germany comes from. Cause I'd find it weird that a bunch of German people came over and created a place called German town. Unless that the word German was already made up by then, but let's see. So apparently the word German is first attested to the English language in 1520, replacing earlier uses of Almain, Alman, and Dutch. Um, in German, the word Germanen today refers to Germanic tribes, which <laughs> that doesn't really help me know what, what the word, I guess, means still. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Why is Deutschland called Germany in English? Here, let's see what this one says. Uh, apparently... Germany comes from the Latin Germania, Alemane from the Alemanni tribe, and Deutschland from the Old High German word, Dustich. No, wait, that wouldn't be ich, because it's I-S-C. I don't even know how you'd pronounce that. Meaning, of the people. So it's, Deutschland is just land of the people. Noise. <laughs> and uh, still don't really know where German originated from. Uh, but, you know, there we go. That, that's all I got for you guys today on that matter. So in 1948, the Displaced Persons Act made it easier for displaced Germans to come to the U.S. And I want to see if they have like any like big activities and stuff. Um, learn the history of Germans in America. Go out for some German cuisine. See, that's what I wanted. If you can't whip up the most authentic bratwurst and sauerkraut, head out to a restaurant that can. No need to decide between currywurst and schnitzel. Have them both. I've never heard of currywurst before. Post hashtag German American Day on social media. Wait a second, why couldn't they have just had this as a point on all days? Oh, you know how to celebrate this one? <laughs> Make a hashtag about it. <laughs> uh, man, that's great. Uh, there is a German belt consisting of cities and states with notable German influence and population. The German belt extends from the Oregon coast to Pennsylvania and includes cities like Germantown. Hey, there we go with that again. Um, yeah, there we go. And also, if you have the time, try and learn some German. I have tried to learn German on multiple occasions and then keep just falling out of the habit. Um, somehow though, I've stuck up with seven days of doing this. So it, I mean, hey, if I can if I can make a half hour podcast or well, 15 to 20 minutes is what you see, but I, I do a little bit of extra work on this and have to figure stuff out. So it's probably, probably closer to 45 minutes a day, you know? I could spend that learning German. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll keep doing this. But we'll see what I can do in a year's time when I have mastered the ability to keep up a habit. <laughs> okay, so we're already over like the 13 minute mark and I still I still got six more of these to talk about. Um, we might do a bit of a speed run. It's National Noodle Day today uh, in the US. And I mean, hey, that doesn't feel very German American day to me. Where's, where's Italian American day when you need it? Uh, Chinese noodles were invented in 2000 BC. European noodles were some, somewhere around the 1200s. American noodles, 1789. Thomas Jefferson returns to the US after several years in France and brings back two cases of pasta. Wow. And then uh, instant noodles, uh, or like ramen in particular, was invented in Japan, where it initially was considered a luxury food and was priced at six times fresh noodles. Wow. <laughs> Imagine that. That's just what all the uni kids eat nowadays for like cheap. When this was back in 1958, it was like, it was the, the super expensive stuff. That was that was it. Wow. So the the three different ways to celebrate National Noodle Day include trying to make your own noodles, 
taking a noodle making class and the much much easier go out for noodles just like don't i don't know i mean you could put in the effort of like making all of them but you could also just go out so there you go i don't know whichever you have time for let's get some noodles uh five facts um this seems to kind of cover some of the things that i already listed about luxury foods in japan and china and then it says super popular in prison uh is one of the top li- top of lists of food items what it consistently ranks on the top of lists of food items sold to inmates Ooh, it's probably because it's it's quite cheap nowadays uh and then it says here that it is even cheaper than you thought at 13 cents per package it would only cost about 140 dollars a year to eat ramen noodles for every meal that's like wow there you go ramen for every single meal i'm guessing that means three meals a day i don't know how filling ramen is though i imagine you'd need need a little bit more but still that's that's pretty cheap let's keep moving uh we got national mad hatter day um alice's film debuted in 1923 mercury was banned from the u.s felt industry in 1941 oh yeah okay sorry that's why people think that uh mad hatters like that's where the phrase comes from because there was mercury in the hats and so they'd slowly 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 go insane um celebrate with a day-long fest of silliness made especially for those who want to wear crazy top hats while walking backwards make lewis carroll proud there you go um in 1960s men's hat went out of style what until the beginning of the 1960s american men were rarely if ever seen in public without their hats but hats with brims began to disappear as a fashion stable by the middle of the decade see that's so lame i think hats are awesome well okay i think awesome hats are awesome i also think awesome hairstyles are awesome so i don't really think hats need to be like the only thing that's in but i definitely think more people could pull off hats i think it'd be fun that way uh 1986 mad hatter day was born in boulder colorado uh when a group of computer programmers saw sir john tenniel's original illustrations of the mad hatter in alice's adventures in wonderland they petitioned as a group for a national day of recognition nice and then in 2016 johnny depp played the hatter in the newer versions of the films um so there was 2020 the 2010s alice in wonderland and 2016 alice through the looking glass um we also now got national transfer money to your daughter day i'm surprised this is a holiday i mean i made mention in it of it in the intro it's mind-boggling to me there is also a national give money to your sunday i think that happens later this month um daughters mark your calendars october 6th is national transfer money to your daughter day you read that right an entire day devoted to daughters getting some extra pocket money from their parents and what a great day it is to be a daughter right on this day parents can transfer money into their daughter's bank accounts hand them some cash in person or use more modernized methods such as venmo and zell Zell. hmm more branding gotta gotta love that who's who's paying me for this uh to help brighten their daughter's day Plus, parents may be more inclined to fork over the cash if they know they are participating in what is considered a national holiday. Oh, yes. Some some random people have decided that it's National Give Your Daughter Money Day. Therefore, I will just hand over cash. My parents know that for celebrated this or National Give Money to Your Sunday. So, I'm, I'm kind of salty. I guess I'll have to, to call them up and see, see if they can hand over... Well, it's hand over cash to my sisters, I guess, today. And then me in a couple weeks uh if they seem at all hesitant show them our article as proof we'll be more than happy to vouch for you yeah but then they're gonna see that part goodness sakes goodness sakes uh what is the actual like history of this the first wire transfer on record was launched in 1872 by western union a financial services company even though this company still exists today money transfers have gotten a glow up uh okay but i want to know why they did it why and the site doesn't say so it's just like oh maybe your daughter meet and maybe she needs money maybe she doesn't <laughs> just give it to her anyway like, okay uh next we have world cerebral palsy day uh it is an unwelcome global phenomenon uh world cerebral palsy day which occurs annually on october 6 reminds us that there are over 17 million people impacted by this disorder it is one of the most common physical disabilities affecting the most vulnerable among us children uh, and additionally it occurs over the span of a child's entire lifetime with no cure this year become a catalyst for change to help improve the lives of those with cerebral palsy uh, in 1810 dr william john little was born and he's the first one ever to study cerebral palsy 
1932, Harry Jennings, an engineer, built the very first modern folding wheelchair to improve the lives of those with motor impairments. In 1948, the Innovative United Celeb... Oh my goodness. United Cerebral Palsy Association was formed to help people with cerebral palsy receive better diagnosis, treatment, and funding. And we're over the 20-minute mark now. Oh no. What do we do? Um... Uh, five things about cerebral palsy that will make you pause for the cause. It mainly affects children. It affects infants. One in 500 infants are born with cerebral palsy. Really? Oh my gosh, that's so many. I did not know that. It affects preemies. Almost half of the people with CP were born premature. Uh, cerebral palsy stigmatizes. In many societies around the world, people with this are kept uneducated and hidden away from the rest of the community. And it hits very hard in the Netherlands. Uh, apparently, a baby is born with cerebral palsy there every 22 hours. Dang. That's crazy. All right. Um, moving along. That was kind of a serious one, but I, I guess I'm now just breaking from the seriousness. I don't really know how to, like, move from serious to non-serious ones. We'll, we'll get some better flow in on on days when I, <laughs> I guess, schedule everything a little bit better. Um, <laughs> now on to alcohol. <laughs> It's National Orange Wine Day. I don't know what orange wine is, but today's the day where you drink it. This little-known style of wine shines with its bold flavor and auburn color. Join the celebration as it gains some appreciation with vineyards, wine cellars, and lovers. Just just normal lovers, not not the lovers of orange wine. Just, just, just lovers. Uh, it's fermented from white wine grapes. The orange wine develops through more skin contact during the fermentation process. Makers treat the white grapes like red grapes, preserving their bolder body and tannins as a result the ordinarily white wine will deepen into a brandy orange color huh i did not know about this there you go uh october 6 also marks the first day of national physician assistant week so physician assistants typically do the following to expand the medical work for okay this is a bit of a list here we go take or review patients medical histories examine patients order and interpret diagnosis tests such as x-rays or blood tests diagnose a patient's injury or illness give treatments such as settling broken bones and immunizing patients educate and counsel patients and their families prescribe medicine assist and assess assess there we go and record a patient's progress research the latest treatments to ensure the quality of patient care and conduct or participate in outreach programs who there we go that was a lot um <laughs> and now on to celebrity birthdays. Oh, we finally made it. Um, bit over time. Let's go. Addison Ray, 21. She is a TikTok star. As foreseen many episodes ago, I don't really know TikTok stars, nor how to explain how one is different from any other, because they just all copy the same dances and skits. Shots fired. Uh, she was in the movie He's All That, which came out this year and received a 31% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, but, you know, it was enjoyed uh, by about 68% of Google viewers, so at least the majority enjoyed it, or I guess the majority who watched it. I don't know how much a movie by an influencer about an influencer tailors to audiences other than those who watch TikTok uh, and whose parents own their Netflix subscriptions, but, you know, uh, I imagine she's number one on here for a reason, so I, I just don't know what that reason is. Next, Jordan Matter, 55, photographer. He has written a lot of books, or perhaps taken pictures for a bunch of books. I don't know. Uh, apparently, he has a YouTube channel that has videos with Dance Mom contestants. <laughs> what? That's the first result. Um, how is this the second time that I've mentioned Dance Moms on this podcast? <laughs> uh, I guess a lot of October babies are just involved with the show. Wait. I'm an October baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. That's why I got to mention it. Uh, LeBron James Jr., 17, basketball player, also known as Bronny James. Oh, I love that. Uh, he is LeBron's eldest child, and he plays point guard, just like our boy Trey, who, if you didn't know, has a basketball game tomorrow. We then have Sherman the Vermin, who's turning 22. Uh, I'm guessing this is Stinky Rat TikTok's brother from the other day. Um, but it, it looks like Sherman has taken his creativity to YouTube instead of TikTok. Uh, so there you go. Grade A under A is turning 33. So speaking of YouTube stars, we got him. Uh, I believe he's the guy who does those animations with like the stick van with the huge underbite and also those wacky little animated stick bird things. I think that's all I got on him. Uh, lastly, Roshan, Roshan Fegan? Question mark? 30? He was Ty Blue, uh, Zendaya's character's brother in Shake It Up, Sander Lawyer in Camp Rock, and oh, and he was in Spider Man 2. He plays Amazed Kid number two. 
Wow, there you go. I wonder if that was his like first rule ever, because that was what back in two thousand four or something, or was that the first one? I don't know. Um, random Wikipedia stuff. We really got to go. We're almost at twenty five minutes. Oh man. Uh, in the year 1600, Eurydice, the earliest surviving opera, receives its premiere performance beginning the Baroque period. Uh, Baroque? Baroque. Yeah. Returning to the fact that it is indeed Space Week, which I barely talked about, um, what, like two days ago when I mentioned it was Space Week. Uh, in 1995, the first planet orbiting another sun, 51 Pegasi B, Pegasi B, it was discovered. Huh. 2010, Instagram, a mainstream photo sharing application, I feel like I did not need to explain that one, but that's what Wikipedia says, uh, was founded. And 1918, for our birth of the day, we got Go Kang Sui, uh, Singaporean soldier and politician, the second deputy prime minister of Singapore, who passed away in 2010. <gasps> passed away the same year Instagram was created. Coincidence? I, I, I think not. For, for real, not. Um, yeah, so that's all we got for today. The fact that I like sped through that last bit has now made me completely unaware of what to do for the end bit the end card is that what it's called no i don't i don't have end cards uh anyway stay safe stay german american and you'll be hearing from me tomorrow <laughs>